Hello, I'm John Paul and I'm here at Rimmer Brothers to change the rear brake shoes and wheel cylinders on a 1981 MGB GT. First I'm going to remove the wheel, so I've got my knock spanner which I put on the hub nuts, a few new taps and we can remove the nut, put it to one side and then pull the wheel off the splines Okay, put it to one side and then we can see the drum, which we'll show you how to take off in a minute. I'm going to unadjust the brake shoes first, so you'll need a, uh, a quarter drive square socket. The, the adjuster nut is on the back and it's, it's on like little squares, which I'll show you shortly, but you just unadjust that all the way and that's to enable us to remove the drum without the shoes getting caught on any lip that is on the drum. And once that's unadjusted, you can then remove the four nuts, they are three quarter spanner size or a modern 19 mils, pretty equivalent. So once the... Once they're out of the way, you might just have to give it a little tap of the hammer and then we can remove the drum we can see the brake shoes. As we're going to change the brake shoes and the wheel cylinder, I think the best way to attack this is to firstly clamp off your flexible brake hose so when we disconnect the brake pipe the fluid doesn't come out. Then remove the split pin and clevis pin from your handbrake cable to the handbrake lever. Um, well, okay, I'll do that bit first and then we'll show you what we're going to do next. I've bent the end of the split pin straight and then we can just remove it with some side cuts. Give the clevis pin a bit of a tap then you can put your side cuts around it again tap up to remove it so that's the handbrake cable removed from the um, from the handbrake lever put the pin to one side I'm going to remove the rear brake pipe and the bleed nipple and also the retaining clip for the wheel cylinder difficult to show on film but if you can see this uh, c-clip fits in the in the groove of the wheel cylinder and that's what attaches it to the back plate. So obviously this, the wheel cylinder is one side, then the back plate and then these, the C-clip clamps it all together. But it's difficult to, to, to see on the video so I'm going to remove that now um, so that the wheel cylinder is completely free from the back plate and then I'll show you how to remove the brake shoes. I'm now going to re remove the two um, brake shoe retaining pins. Now how they work is there's a pin that comes through the back plate, then there's this brake shoe, then there's a spring and then there's that clip. So to remove it, you need to push it down, turn it by 90 degrees, so it slips over the, the, the square. So when it's locked in like that, push it down, twist it, and pull it off. There is a proper tool you can buy that fits over the, the washer that, that you can spin it, but you know I've got a pair of pliers, so you just hold the pin at the back, push it in, twist it by 90 degrees, and then that's, that's all out of the way. So now it's just a case of pushing each shoe out of the adjuster and then you'll be able to pull the whole lot out including the handbrake lever so we can change all the springs on the bench which is a lot easier than doing it while it's on the back plate. So now we'll probably just get your, get your new brake shoes set out in place. So you've obviously got your leading and trailing shoes so the leading edge on each shoe is, is opposite and then we can just remove the wheel cylinder from down the bottom and then we can just remove our springs and handbrake lever, replace them onto the new shoes um, and then put the wheel cylinder back in place. With the wheel cylinder removed it just releases a bit of tension on this spring which is the handbrake return spring. So you'll just be able to push it to one side and then you'll be able to just remove that spring from the handbrake linkages and then you'll be able to pull the brake shoes away like that and then just need to check that the handbrake linkage is all nice and free and then it's just a case of transferring those parts onto the new shoes. So we've transferred the handbrake lever and the return springs onto the new brake shoes so now it's a case of feeding your handbrake linkage lever back through the back plate, get it all into place then we'll be able to slide the wheel cylinder up and refit that but we'll show you that in a second. So with the brake shoes back in place now we can now slide up the wheel cylinder in between the shoes and then get it through the holes in the back plate 
And then once that's in the, in, the, in the place, we'll refit the top return spring and the shoe retaining um, clips before we then put the clip on the wheel cylinder. To hold the wheel cylinder in place, which will definitely aid you when you're putting the C-clip on the back, I always find it best to just clamp a pair of mold grips onto the hub and it holds the wheel cylinder well, really well in place. So when you're messing about with the C-clip at the back, which, which is a mess about, that it just holds everything steady so you're not move, you're moving anything about. And then we'll just replace our brake shoe retaining pins. So you've got the pin, then you've got the spring, pick up the retaining washer, push it in 90 degrees, that's in place and do exactly the same with the other one. As we chatted about earlier, this is now time to fit the wheel cylinder retaining circlip. You know, it's not the easiest job in the world, but yeah, let's see how we get on. So that's all the brake shoes and wheel cylinder all back in place. I can remove my mold grips. I've replaced the brake pipe into the back of the wheel cylinder and I've also put the bleed nipple in there as well, ready to bleed the brakes. So now it's time to refit the brake drum. So we will just lift it up, slide it on. I mean, you can put them nuts on if you want, um, but yeah, in fact, that is probably the best thing to do. Put the nuts on, then you can adjust the brake up, which is back to your quarter socket. Do it up until the drum's tight. Just work the handbrake lever to centralize the brake shoes. Adjust it up again. When it's all nice and tight and central up, you just back it off one turn until you can spin the brake drum nice and freely. It's not binding. You can see how much movement you've got on your handbrake shoe uh, lever because that's uh, um, an indication. If there's only a little bit of movement, they're nicely adjusted. Then it's a case of replacing the handbrake cable to the lever, put our clevers pin back in and split pin, and then it's time to bleed the brakes, which is probably a good time where we could use our easy bleed, which we've seen on previous videos. We can connect that up to the master cylinder, pump it up to the tyre, pressure of 20 psi, release your bleed nipple till the air stops coming out, tighten it up, press your brake pedal to make sure you've got a hard pedal, everything feels okay, and then it's time to replace the wheel.